Hello and welcome to this new edition of Horizon, the video zine of GM Financial Services. And this month we are going to talk about a huge development that just took place a few months back. Incidentally, this discussion was going on for a while, but finally it got materialized. And this development may have far-reaching implications on the Indian economy and Indian financial markets. JP Morgan, one of the largest financial institutions in the world, runs various indices and they have a government bond index for emerging markets and India got included in that index recently or rather the announcement was made recently. The actual inclusion would start sometime in June next year, June 2024 and uh, over a period of time, 10 month period at the rate of roughly 1% per month. By April 2025, uh, Indian government bonds would be part of the index and the weightage of Indian government bonds is going to be roughly 10%. Now this announcement is a huge one. So before we get into the impact or implications of uh, this development or this news, let's understand what exactly uh, you know an index is. An index is a representative of an economy or a part of it or it could be a representative of a securities market or some segment of it. Take for example some of the popular names that we keep hearing the BSE Sensex or the uh, NSE's Nifty these are popular indices in the equity market that we hear of. There are bond market indices even within India and this particular index is a global index but it covers as we just saw local currency denominated government bonds issued by emerging market countries. Now when it is a representative of this particular segment of the market it reflects the performance of the government bonds of all the emerging markets put together. Investing, especially the institutional investors like mutual funds, pension funds, etc. They have to benchmark their performance against some index. And that's the second application of indices. And the third and equally important application of indices is when somebody wants to take exposure to a market or a segment of the market, the easiest and most convenient way is to buy the index or buy the constituents of the index. Now, the moment somebody constructs an index, the person who wants to allocate to that market or that segment does not have to worry about doing research. That research is actually done by the company that constructs the index. So three applications, representative of the market performance, benchmarking by active managers and allocation by passive investors. And by passive I mean those who do not need to spend time on identifying which securities to buy or not buy etc. That entire package is given in form of an index. And this has a huge implication on the Indian economy, Indian markets. And let's look at the impact first. Look at the last part of what we discussed, the three applications. Allocation, when somebody wants to take exposure to a particular market. And there are so many funds tracking the government bonds of emerging markets. They would straight away, when they replicate, they would straight away allocate money to the Indian government bonds. Number two, when foreign capital in this measure comes in, it also provides 
stability. It also warrants that the governments also behave in a fiscally responsible manner. So there is a fiscal stability. The third, so there is potential fiscal stability. The third and related factor is if the economy becomes stable, the currency also tends to become stronger. And when the currency becomes stronger, there is a potential currency appreciation. It's also observed over the years that whenever a currency appreciates of a country, more and more investors get interested in that country. More and more investors start allocating funds to that country. And that would bring in more and more FPI flows. Now when so much capital comes and we'll look at how much is expected but when so much capital comes in it also helps development of the market and it also helps in innovative products so product innovation also can happen now when we look at the enhanced investor attractiveness leading to higher inflows by foreign investors so who are these investors and how do they behave? There are two major segments. One segment is the institutional investor, which is predominantly trying to replicate indices. They look at the low cost index options or index funds. The others are advised investor and these advised investors are advised by financial planners, investment advisors, whatever name you give them. And both these investors simply replicate an index or buy index funds. From that point of view, these are passive investors. They do not do active research to decide what to buy and what not to buy. Now that means when the index has a 10% allocation to India, whatever is the size of the fund, 10% of the money would come to India or Indian government bonds in this particular case. The investors do not take the decision whether to increase allocation or decrease allocation because these are passive investors. And what the size could be? is phenomenal there are various estimates doing round somebody puts that number as around 20 billion dollars somebody puts that number as around 25 billion dollars and some optimistic figures uh, are also being discussed up to 35 40 45 billion dollars worth of money and we'll put those numbers also into perspective but when these kind of money comes in there's not just the upside, there is a potential downside as well. And this potential downside could be number one, inclusion of India into the index means some of the other countries which are part of that index, their allocation reduces. So in future, at some point in time, if somebody's allocation has to go up and India's allocation in percentage has to come down, there could be automatic passive outflow. The second thing is when there is some turbulence in some of the large emerging economies and the investors at large want to run away from the emerging markets because they do not want exposure in certain countries. The better countries who are part of the index also would see outflows. Because as the total corpus shrinks, commensurately each country would see an outflow in line with their percentage weight in the index. So if there is geopolitical instability in X country or Y country, even the country named Z may suffer because of that. So that's the downside because the investors are passive. They are not going to differentiate between different countries. 
when that happens massive amount of money can move in or move out and that may increase the volatility in the markets if the market volatility goes up because of the inflows or outflows a similar volatility may also be seen in the currency so that's a downside and let's be aware of it this is a more globalized world and india is increasingly becoming the part of that globe so to that extent we might be vulnerable to some such shocks and we'll have to be ready with that but let's turn back and look at the numbers and try and see what could be the size of inflows first of all as i was just mentioning some time back china continues to have around 10% weighting the index india which was zero has gone up to 10% straight away and by april 2025 the target of 10% has to be reached some of the other countries have seen their shares going down and there are a couple of countries where because of their fiscal instability or uh, higher deficits the committee has put those countries under review to decide whether to maintain their current weightage to reduce their current weightage or completely remove the country from the index and remember this 10% number because that 10% number is an important number currently the total amount of money invested in index funds tracking this particular index is roughly 230 uh, 5 billion dollars or so now at 230 billion 10% of that is 23 billion expect something like 20 billion dollars in in probably a pessimistic scenario also simply because of this addition and this is going to be over and above the other money which has been coming and this is where different experts put different numbers if the overall size of this portfolio goes up then this 20 23 25 billion dollars could start going up it may go to 30 35 40 billion dollars as well we will look at the fpi data something that you can see on the screen right now calendar year 2013 to you know the last week so that's 10 years and roughly 10 months in this period the net fpi inflows foreign portfolio investors invested on a net basis which is whatever money came in and whatever went out during this period the total money that india received and this is net so inflows minus outflows was around 120 billion dollars out of which a reasonable size of money came into equity markets but roughly 72 billion dollars came into the debt markets now put this additional flow that we are talking about in the context of these figures 120 billion dollars of total fpi flow over a period of almost 11 years and this 20 billion dollars which is one sixth of that would be an additional inflow between june 2024 and april 2025 we are talking about massive additional flows coming in if i only look at the debt markets 20 or 24 versus 72 we are talking about roughly one third of the flows whatever was received in 11 years roughly a third or 30% of that may come in the 10 months period 
and that is a flood think of any economy as a closed vessel what happens in a closed vessel is when liquid flows from outside every object starts to float and as the level of water rises the objects keep rising along with the water use that analogy in the context of an economy when external liquidity flows into an economy the assets start to appreciate the asset prices start to go up and when so much liquidity comes in we saw what happened between 2003 to 2008 we saw what happened between 2014 to 2018 and we saw what happened between 2020 and 2023 the additional flows that keep coming into the economy would lift the prices and it's not just the debt prices it's also the equity prices housing prices all the assets that augurs well for the economy and that's why it, it was important to put these numbers into perspective in this particular index as we saw initially is one of the most influential index what is the influence the influence it has on the other indices other similar indices or other index providers so as per one report that uh, bank of america securities uh, issued very recently it says that inclusion by jp morgan into their government bond index may lead to other index providers also following suit so entry into one index may lead to entry into other indices as well and when that happens all the mutual funds tracking those respective indices would have to start allocating to indian government bonds the fitch ratings agency in their uh, one of their notes on this particular development said when a country gets added to some such index then overall there is a potential that fiscal prudence also comes in and when that fiscal prudence comes in good amount of clean up happens within the economy the economy tends to become a little more stable and the currency tends to appreciate when you put all these things together when you look at the earlier issues of horizon where we discussed about india being that one bright spot in a troubled world when we looked at increased financial inclusion among indians this development along with those augurs very well for india augurs very well for indian markets and in turn augurs very well for the indian investors looking forward to a bright future looking forward to a great new year for all of you wish you a very happy diwali and a prosperous new year Investment in securities market a subject to market risks read all the related documents carefully before investing